All right, welcome to another episode of the Goodman and Hummel podcast. I'm Jeff Goodman. Uh, Robbie is in uh, San Diego right now, and if you can tell, he's a little sleepy because he flew in last night and his eyes are a little tired. But the other guy we got on looks spry, looks fresh. He's in his office. He's ready to go. And that is Virginia head coach Tony Bennett. Tony, how you doing? I'm good, Jeff and Robbie. Nice to see you guys. I'm looking forward to talking some basketball. All right, let, let's start with overall, if we can, Tony. Um, so many things have changed or are changing within college basketball, right? I mean, you got the transfers, you got the NIL. I mean, it just feels like it's it's again, it's not going to look like it has in, in two years, five years, ten years. What what worries you the most about all the changes? Well, it's funny as you're talking, I just noticed um, over your head, I was seeing the picture of Luke legacy, Luke's legacy. And it just, uh, you know, I got to coach against when I was at Washington State. My father was at Wisconsin. Then he went uh, after retirement. He came out at Washington State. And as you're asking that question, I, I saw Luke Olson. I think of my dad's influence was Bobby Knight. Robbie, you played for Coach Katie. I got to play for Coach Katie in the U.S. Pan American team um, when I was uh, back in the, the early 90s. You played for Coach Katie, right? I so just I missed him. Oh, I you just did. missed him. He, he had just retired when I committed to Purdue. So Okay. So I knew him around a lot. <laughs> he came on a lot of the road trips, so I know him really well. But, yeah, uh, he, it's, but those older coaches and, and, you know, just the game, um, <laughs> I always wonder – what would they think? What would my dad, you know, like, and we talked a little bit about, cause it is really different. I, I think having played, um, you know, in college and been in the game and fortunately played some professionally, I think you see some things. I think, um, I worry. My biggest concern is that the college game has always been more, not perfect, but about, the game about um, the camaraderie, about the the, un- the experience that young men get that can't be touched, no matter what. They can go and make millions of dollars. They can go and they can even win an NBA championship. They can go play and, and reach their individual dreams, which is amazing and right to go after. But to a person, I experienced it myself and many others who had a lot more success in the NBA. They say the time I spent in college, whether it was Low major, not even. I go back to Terry Porter, who played for my dad, who played 17 years, two NBA finals, um, and on and on say, you can't touch that. The crowds, the camaraderie, the the ups and downs of stories, it just becomes business. So my hope is that that's my greatest fear as a long answer, but I think it's the right answer, at least in my mind, that this doesn't become too much where you lose that college experience and enjoy it. Look, I'm all for it. I think it's awesome that the players can find opportunities to make some money and do things with name, image, and likeness, as long as it doesn't affect, obviously, the studies, the game, your practices, all that. And there are some things you worry about with it, but I just don't want it to lose what it is. I, I think my dad had the best quote I've ever heard. He, he would say, the NBA has the players, but college still has the game. Now, people will argue that, but there's a, it's a different kind of game, a different kind of experience that um, I think that's what I hope we don't get so towards the the pro model that we lose what the gift that I had, that Robbie had, that um, – did you play in college, Jeff, or not? I, I did not. I, I but you did not college. have – I skipped college. Okay, I just went straight to, the, straight to the league. I <laughs> no, so that, that's a long answer, but to an important question for real because I think that's that's real stuff. Coach, do you, do you worry about the locker room? Like, if you've got a guy who's making crazy money in name, image, and likeness, if you, let's say a, you're coaching a guy like a Zion Williamson, and he is making crazy money off of this. Do you worry about what that does to your team? Yeah, no, I think all those are real issues. I wear my shirt with our pillars and, you know, that one right there, unity. <laughs> and then, you know, how do you have great unity? You have gratefulness or thankfulness, right? And yeah, I think there's some real things. You know, you can play out all those scenarios if if it happens the way it does, where guys have been in your program for a couple of years that are established and contributing, and then someone new comes in and they're not, and then how does that all play out? Interesting, Tina Thompson's our women's coach, and I, she, I thought, had some really good insights back a couple of years ago when this was coming. She said, you know, in the WNBA, it kind of was like you, you're in the WNBA and they would, you know, allow some individual marketing 
and they would just go after the key players. And it, it kind of hurt sometimes the, the team or the league because whether it's Nike, the shoe comes, whoever would go after probably the Tina Thompsons and those superstars. And there wasn't as much um, opportunities for things. And it just created some of the things you're getting at. So, yeah, I think that stuff could all be real, but, um, but your hope is we won't know there's so much uncharted waters with this, but, uh, and everyone's different how they're going to go about this. There's different markets. What opportunities are there? And what is market value? You know, it's going to take, we all know we're wise, at least this is, um, maybe some people have market value with social media and all that, but, um, it's probably going to be, um, I don't think I can get in trouble with saying this, but you know, maybe I can, maybe I should just shut up, but I think donors are going to give us right, their ways to help do things. And it's, it's just how it's going to be because I've talked to agents. I remember back in those days, it's hard to get market value. It's hard um, in today's economy to just say, Oh, this guy has got so much market value. There's so few of those. So, there's other ways that it's going to take, you know, in terms of that, and that affects the whole the whole balance of it. Imagine Hummel's market value Ooh. back at Purdue. He would have gotten paid. Right, I Rob? Mean, trying to rub uh, it in here or something? Or? We've gotten free, <laughs> a free lifetime subscription to the hard hats, you know, whatever the boiler hard hat. <laughs> yeah, Blue P. I mean, <laughs> P just racking it up. Coach, it's not just a national landscape that's shifting. Your league is changing a lot. You know, with, with next year, Coach Kale be gone. Now, Roy Williams is gone. What's the ACC going to look like here? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously it, it appears already that, you know, the recruiting that Hubert and, you know, John have done it at Duke and Carolina. I mean, they just, that, that's such a, because of what, you know, the reputation, the history of what Coach Williams has established, Coach Smith, all the coaches before, obviously, Coach K at Duke. Um, it's such a powerful brand. It's such a um, uh, historic or prestigious place. So the talent seems to be coming in, but it'll just look different. You know, there's a change. I, I've heard some people say, and I, I don't know, I'd be curious your guys' view on it. It's going to be interesting over the next couple of years, how this all plays out with NIL, with um, Alston funds, how if it's, you know, if that stuff's capped, it's not capped. This one-time transfer, how – extreme it goes and if it goes real extreme are some of the athletic directors and coaches are you going to see people saying you know what this is now my time to step away or not I, you know you'll be curious I, I think you sometimes can overreact you can always assume the extreme this is what's going to happen and I think it's best just to pause and see how this really plays out now you're hearing some impressive stories but it's like in the recruiting trails oh you hear I think sometimes, you know, they're doing this to get this guy. And who knows what's true and what's not. And sometimes it's best not even to worry about it until you know some facts. And then you just move forward and make, make some assessments. But that could be a possibility. How much are you talking? Like, I don't know what you're allowed to do. Everybody, I feel like, has different rules on what they're allowed to do within their, their maybe state or within their institution. Are you guys allowed to talk about NIL at all to any of these recruits or even current players like what are you allowed to do now beats me <laughs> no <laughs> i mean it's it's so hard no I, I think um some some schools that you know we recruit against and that's not wrong that that's the main point of their pitch when they're recruiting it's it's all centered around that this is your market value this is your brand and um and some i think families or recruits come in and that's a huge part of it that's their pride. Some don't. Right now, we're taking the approach a little more wait and see. It's not like that's not the way. And absolutely, you, you look at things. But I think there's um, this is still about becoming a great player, and it's a long-term investment. And, of course, there's going to be opportunities along the way. Everybody, I'm for that. But I think there's wisdom in being um, wise and discerning with a balanced approach and addressing it. But if that becomes the main thing, I mean, that's 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 how some schools may want to do it. Other schools don't. Um, right now, it's just this is an opportunity we sell and we'll see what happens. And that's why it's a little early. Um, and I don't even know what the deals are and what players are getting. You know, I you read some, but uh, I think it's like what I was talking about, Tina Thompson. I don't think it's quite the way people thought it was going to be as of yet. Today, many small business owners are busier than ever. Time spent searching for and interviewing the wrong candidates for a job opening could be time better spent 
growing a business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has made it easier to get to the candidates worth interviewing faster, and it's free. Create a, a free job post in just minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 750 million people. Focus on candidates with the skills and experience you need. Use screening questions to get your role in front of, not, uh, in front of only the most qualified people. Then use the simple tools on LinkedIn Jobs to quickly filter and prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. So remember, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates worth interviewing faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash good. That's linkedin.com slash good to post your job for free. So you won the national title uh, in 2019. How, what, what's the biggest uh, way your life changed? I mean, you're you're kind of the same person. Let's let's be honest. I don't think you've changed from the outside. What what does your wife say? What, what's the biggest change with Tony Bennett since he won a national title? Why would I? I mean, I I lost in the first round the year before, and it, that's this. I, you say it all the time, and it's the right thing that people say. This is what we do, not who we are. If, if you'll get consumed, if you're um, you're basing it all on how well you do or how poorly you do, sports is humbling that way. And it can trick you in so many ways. And, and um, no, I shouldn't. I, I still love the game. I, I still struggle with things. I still, um, I think I, I have a perspective. I, I think you realize the longer you do it, um, how much of a gift the good things that happen to you are in this sport. And you learn to appreciate them even more um, with a healthy perspective. And then, um, you know, the hard things that happen to you challenge you. Um, if they start chewing you up and destroying you well then it's probably time to step away but I think you also get a perspective about that and it still does come down to impact and influence and and there's the competitive side and the kind of putting teams together and trying to win that every every player has you I'm looking at one of the fiercest competitors I've seen and, and Robbie I remember that about him and the guys that my dad coached at Wisconsin there's just there's that side of it and it's still about that piece and then the relationships and how you can influence young men um, that's unique that I think high school coaches have smaller coaches. And I still believe we have that. I hope we never lose as, as coaches to like help guys navigate. So later on in life when basketball is done or whatever, they play a long time in the pros, you still can, can pour into things, pour into them things that, that matter beyond the, the losses, the wins, the salaries and all that stuff. So as a Purdue guy, I have to ask you this question. Ty drums the line. There's three seconds to go. There's like, or excuse me, down three, six seconds to go. Could you give me like a confidence level of what you like felt at that time? Just to make me feel better that you're like, I wasn't very confident. Oh, <laughs> like, man. I, well, the next year you guys beat us by like 80 points. That was in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. But no, I think if we could I, trade games, you yes, know, like I, 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 John no, Shire, where he beat me in all the games <laughs> I cared about and I beat him in like AU or Spain. <laughs> We no, try it if, if you want. That was, um, I mean, I, I, you know, I almost, you know, they did a special and I watched it and showing the, the Purdue crowd celebrating in that moment, which is one of the, to me in the NCAA tournament, one of the most amazing turn of events and moments I've ever seen. But no, I, I, you thought, okay. I remember Ty looked at me and was like, if he makes it, we could still press and follow and still have a chance. Yep. But we also sometimes work on missing free throws and he made his first one and then he, you know, we, there was a little like we looked at each other and it was kind yeah. of I was trying to get someone to the bench, you know, to case he made it. And then he just decided to miss it. And obviously the rest is history. But I, no, it's probably like, you know, when the way Carson Edwards was playing, banked one in. I'm like, this is this is tough. And then when it, when he went to the line, I'm like, probably not great. But you never know. You just you stay in the moment as a competitor. You're just thinking about until every option is exhausted, you stay in it. So you just try to keep your, your head about what has to happen. So, but uh, it didn't look likely. And um, obviously that was, that's a, that's a hard blow. And I, I love Matt. And he, you talk about a classy guy. I mean, he called me the next day and he wished me well. And I know he's got a great team and I got a feeling he's going to get his chance at that. And, um, you know, I had played, I told you for coach Katie and he was there. It was interesting because my dad was at that game. Coach Katie was at that game. And in 2000, Wisconsin beat uh, Purdue to go to the final four in Albuquerque. And I just remember Co coach Katie never got to go, but one of the greatest coaches in our games. And um, again, it, 
um, doesn't take away anything from his career. Um, and I think Matt will have his chances because of the job he does. But an amazing turn of events, yeah. It didn't look great, and I think the percentages even show that. But I don't know. Does that help you or not? Yeah, I feel better. So okay. just to clarify, you didn't tell Ty to miss it. It was – So we, we had talked about it. Um, it There's this moment where he went to the line, and, you know, I think he had to make his first one. We were down three, right? Um, and so – and then I, I was trying to get – I think it was someone into the bench, uh, to the scores table. He kind of looked at me, and I was like, either way would have been fine. Not yeah. fine. It worked out because if he makes it, we put someone in, we try to get a turnover with six, yep. 5.8 seconds. If he misses, then we know bat it out. So I kind of, but I did not give him a direct miss. I right. know what we're doing. But if you see it, Kyle was telling mom and he bat it out, bat it out. And I think Ty made that decision on his own. So it's kind of just like, I let him go with it. Every good coach lets their players make yeah. the plays down the steps. So. <laughs> players league out here. Players yeah. league out here. <laughs> I, I ask everybody this that plays overseas, and, and I, you know, I played in Russia a year. Our owner was bribing refs. He was bribing <laughs> in playoff games. Like, do you have a, a best overseas story? And I'll, I'll even go further. Is it true that you played for the Burger King Kings in New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I barely played. I, I was I played my three years with the Charlotte Hornets, and I actually had some injury issues. So the reason I went over to um, Australia and New Zealand was to um, just see if I could get back in shape so I could return to the NBA. They have opposite seasons. And so, yeah, and all the team, I ended up going playing for the Sydney Kings mm -hmm. and I uh, was going pretty well. They ended up cutting me. That's a long story, but got cut. Every player does has their story. And I'm like, you know, might as well stay over here on this part of the world just to get in shape and see if I'm going to come back. And uh, so, I, yeah, the Burger King Kings in New Zealand had a spot and I played kind of on and off. I couldn't really get healthy, but um, we ended up, my wife and I ended up staying there um, for the next two more years, three years. It's an amazing story. We ended there and I kind of, that's how I got Kirk Penny. I, um, he was there. I met him when he was 15. Sure. And um, it was really cool. My wife, we got, we met someone there. We became part of a, a church plant there. I was coaching the pro team and playing. And just was a, we just newly married. And that's probably one of the most beautiful parts of the world you'll ever yeah. see. And so that was the early part of our you know, getting married and being in it. And it actually, I said, you know what? I think maybe because I swore off coaching once I got hurt, I, I kind of enjoy this. And so that sort of got me into coaching um, that I probably never would have otherwise. All right. So everybody thinks I got paid in whoppers. That's the big joke. <laughs> I didn't get cash. Such a low level league. <laughs> Burger King hookup was real. <laughs> All right. Give, give me the most trouble you've ever been in when you were a kid. When you were growing up, everybody thinks you're this, you know, like never do anything wrong, uh -huh. right? Like Brad yeah. Stevens and you are the two people that I always feel like, I, you know, I can't dig any dirt up on ever, <laughs> like nothing. <laughs> well, first of all, I, got, I was just thinking about back to the New Zealand. So I was, remember the old tray mats you'd get when you go to McDonald's bigger. So I was on a tray mat and then I did a poster out there and it, it's this, it says I wore pony, P-O, pony shoes. And it was like, this poster says winners only wear pony. And I was like spray bottling my face. It's like one of the cheesiest posters you've ever seen. And like, I've, I've like hidden it. So my son never sees it. But uh, so no, I've got so many stories because that's where they do the hakas and rugby and all that stuff. Yeah. So great stories. But I actually was a problem child, little on up uh, until about eighth or ninth grade. I was not a, a great kid to have. You just asked my mom. I, I did a lot of things I'm not proud of. So, wow. um, but I, I got better as it went on. So, uh, but that's all that stuff is remains private. So private, smart, very, <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll try to, at some point I'll interview your mom. We'll see if we can get <laughs> yeah, some yeah, of those no, no, no. I'm not, not proud, but I, I turned the, turned the corner. So. <laughs> coach, do, do you have any desires to coach in the NBA? Certainly you have a, really good thing going to Virginia, but just the, does it allure you at all? I mean, the game, you know, obviously those are the greatest talented players in the world. And, you know, you, when you watch the playoffs and, and, you know, yeah. you just see how hard guys are playing and possessions matter. It seems like all it becomes a little closer to a college type of game. Um, sure. That's, that's fun to watch. Um, I think there's pluses of being in the NBA and then there's, you know, pluses of being in college. Right now, I'm very content in college. I really am. Um, and so uh, I enjoy the opportunities that I have to influence and just build build teams. And I love Virginia. So um, you never can say never, but I really like the college game. And um, in, in the near future, I don't see myself venturing in. But, you know, it's just uh, 
it's it's interesting to see what will happen with the college game over the years. You know, I think that all those things will make a difference. But um, I, I've loved coaching at Wisconsin as an assistant. Um, obviously, Washington State, my years there, and now Virginia. I've been fortunate um, to be a – you know, I've been a head coach most of my career, but I've been at all power conferences, and I love that. I, I and, and I played at Green Bay, so I got to see that side of it. But just to be part of building programs and going through it and – um, been to two final fours at, you know, the two of the schools I've been at. That's what kind of hooked. That's what made me want to get into coaching from a competitive standpoint. I volunteered at Wisconsin as a manager for my dad in 2000. And that team went to the final four. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is as good as it gets. And I thought it was going to be a lot easier than it has been. You realize that. But um, I love that. I mean, there's a joy. Even just watch. We talked a little bit about the Ryder Cup. When you see, you know, a group of guys come together and you go through it and then you get to experience those amazing moments, winning Big Tens, advancing. I don't know. Have you, did you guys play in like Sweet 16s? Or yeah, we made, we made the Sweet 16 two times. Okay. I was hurt one. I, I blew my knee out, so I didn't play. Yeah. But the one that I did get to play in, it was a, <laughs> it was a joyous deal getting there. And it's, it's yeah. just that. I mean, I remember you, you get to the tournament, the excitement, you know, or you win a conference and then you, you get to the tournament, then you, you win a game and then you get to the Sweet 16 week and it just – it keeps ramping up and up. And then when you touch the final four and you think that's all, I'm good. And then you win, you know, for us, we won the Saturday game, you know, in an amazing way, those three games, you know, against Auburn, Kyle guy hitting the free three throws. And then you get to, you get to Monday and you're like, there's only two teams right now that are practicing on Sunday. And you're like, we're here. Might as well go for the whole thing. And just that, that's, that's the stuff from a, you know, momentary kind of the competitive side. You just love, you can't get enough of that. All right, so you, you've won a national title. You have um, – I'm going to read off this. I, I know this will probably embarrass you, but your your record in the ACC over the last eight years is 117 and 28. Kays is 101 and 45. Roy's was 95 and 49. You've won a title. You've been in first or second place seven of the last eight years in the ACC regular season title. Yet there's still criticism. Well, he plays slow. It's boring. I can't watch Virginia. I'm sure you hear it somewhat. Probably not in Charlottesville because you win so much, but I, I hear it. Like, how how annoying does it get, or does it not bother you at all? Not really. I mean, I you know, you just you do what you can. I, when I first took the job at Virginia, everyone said they'd recruit against us and say, don't go there. They'll never win. It, you, you can't win. You just can't. There's too many powerhouses there. Come on, look at it. They have a blip here or there. And then when we started winning, they would say, well, whatever you do, don't go to Virginia. You'll never, you're going to have to play too much defense. You might not score as many points. You'll never be able to go play in the NBA. Can't do it. So it's, it's a, you won't do it. Well, thankfully we've had guys, it's really, that's what I was so excited about. The guys that have come in, you know, maybe they're three-star guys or not the hot, most hot guys, but they're going on Malcolm Brogdon, Joe Harris. And, you know, there's 10 to 12 guys in the last many years that have gone on and are doing really good things in the NBA. And so I really believe how we're trying to play and people who know the game know if you're going to play at the next level and, you know, getting good shots, playing hard D, you can never apologize for a style of play that gives you the best chance to win. We don't recruit like Kentucky, Duke, or Kansas. We try to get certain guys that fit and then you just go about it. And I think there is a beauty when we're playing well. And at times, everybody's hard to watch. I'll be honest. I mean, we're, we're in there. I get all that, but that's part of it. I, I've, my dad got so much criticism about that. And I think I learned from him, you know, when I watched his teams play and they were saying, you know, going at him a little bit. And he said, he just was so stubborn and said, this is the way we have to do it. If I hadn't seen him go through that, I think I would have tried to venture away. I, I got to do a quick fix. I got to be different. But I just saw him say, this is our best chance to beat the best. And that was huge for me going through that process and going to the Washington States and having to go through that stuff myself. But um, I don't pay too much mind. I don't, I'm probably, I don't have a social media account. I don't, none of that. And I just, it's more about the quality of what you're doing. If you can be good at what you do and I hate losing and I love to win in its proper perspective. At times I lose perspective and um you know, I think winning the national championship, the ones we won, helps validate that we've done it in the right way. Because, you know, we talked about that. I, I wouldn't trade what's happened here in the impact and the wins and losses with, you know, playing a so-called sexier style of ball. But 
we're helping guys get to the NBA. They're having careers overseas and we're, we got rings and banners and we're doing it in a way that's right. Not, not, not bad. There's different styles. That's what I love about college basketball. You got the Syracuse zone. You got our defense. You got teams that play fast, teams that are a little more opportunistic, that, you know, run motion. So that's the beauty of the college game. Um, but also I, I love the kind of young men we've gotten and the value of this is a really good academic school. We're trying to, to balance both and, and do it right. So let's get on to this year's team. Every year you and I talk, whether it's in Charlottesville, whether it's at the Peach Jam, whether it's about now, and every year you're like, we're not that good. You, you have us overrated. You have us overrated. Last year, I didn't have you in the top 25, and Virginia fans crushed me. How, how good is this team going to be, Tony? Is this the same deal where you're trying to temper any expe expectations? I think you're probably ranked lower this year than you have been any year the last four or five. Yeah, I mean, this is – I mean, I just look at the facts. I, I mean, expectations, all that, that stuff's going to be there. It's not. It's, it's what you do. That's kind of irrelevant. But this is probably our most inexperienced team in terms of – Kihei Clark's our only player that's played multiple years with a lot of experience. We, we played a freshman last year, Reese Beekman, who, um, you know, those two fit so well with um, Jay Huff, Sam Hauser, and Trey Murphy. And I'm excited for all those guys, but Trey Murphy, we, we, Trey was going to redshirt. He didn't even know. He didn't even, we got to say, look, you, you got a free year so you can play and then you'll have next year. But, um, you know, obviously we weren't expecting him to go and he absolutely made the right decision. Had a great summer league and was picked 16th, I think 17th. Crazy. Um, yeah. but, um, but, you know, besides Kihei, we got Reese, we, no one else. So we have two transfers that are going to help us. Um, Armand Franklin and Jaden Gardner, one played at Indiana, one played at East Carolina that have experience. And then everyone else is pretty, even if they've been in our program, they really haven't played much of those through injuries or stuff. So it's just kind of a new group that, you know, you start forging your identity and seeing, I really don't know. I, I, uh, it'll be a different team. We lost our perimeter shooting, um, you know, three really good perimeter shooters, but, um, you know, we got two guards that have experience and I like that. And then the transfers have experience. Um, it's just, but they're new to us. So I really don't know. And I, and I'm pretty much that way all the time. I'm never certain, but, um, we got work to do. I'm real about that, but we won't back down from anything and we'll see where it goes. And it's just, it doesn't really matter if I think we're going to be really good or not. It's going to be how you develop and improve. Coach, you mentioned those three guys you lose. They're, they're your top three scorers. What, what offensively do you think you guys will look like this year? Yeah, I think, you know, at times we're going to have to use some ball screens um, because I think Kihei and Reese are good off the ball screen and they're quick and can make some plays. Um, you know, what I've seen, some guy, you know, we'll, um, we'll have a balance. I think hopefully we'll be a bit more this year. I mean, you have to look at this, but more physical this year. You're going to see some more physicality. Last year we were okay defensively, but that wasn't one of our best defense teams. So we're going to have to really dig in and, and, and be good defensively, you know, offensively use some physicality. Um, I think we scored a little more last year. I'm sure the people who don't like our style may hate it worse this year. So um, <laughs> tell them to not tune in. And that's the problem for them, but we have to figure out ways to, to be physical, to get good shots, you know, and, and maybe the margin of error right now might be a little smaller than it's been. And that's okay. Um, you just take these guys, but I like it. I think it's what will become at the end of the year and um, building it. That'll be with this team, but I hope it's a more physical team that guards hard. Um, and I do hope we can run the floor. we got some bigs that'll really run the floor and that's the, a little bit concerning, but also kind of the exciting challenge thing. We're going to have to be a little different this year and figure out ways to manufacture some things offensively and defensively. So it's not going to be like last year. We really tried to spread the floor and let our, you know, our fives, Jay Huff and Sam Hauser and Trey. I mean, they were all almost, well, those two were almost 40% shooters. Jay was in the mid thirties. We're a little more rugged this year, traditional with our, our forwards and centers. And they were men, Tony. I mean, they were older yeah. Hauser and yeah. Jay Huff. Now, like you said, you've got guards at least that are, that are experienced. Kihei and, and Franklin comes over and, and Reese has a year of starting under his belt. But like those, the bigs, other than Gardner, I assume you don't, you don't have much, much of a feel yet. Do you? Right. Not at all. I, you know, I think, but that's okay. I think the competition will reveal that. So it's really a, you know, 
there's been some workouts in the fall where, like we got a ways to go and then there's been flashes where they've looked good and um you know I don't know what the league will be like this year I mean the league's always solid last year it was down a little bit I, I say that um doesn't mean it was a bad league it was just it was down wow um, I've never heard wait wait I've never heard a coach say that about their league ever everybody always says their their league's the greatest maybe during the year you know yeah, you say yeah that's right. <laughs> No, it was. I mean, we look, our guys, that doesn't take away from our guys winning the regular season ACC championship. That was amazing for them. And then, but um, it just, when you had three one seeds in years past, I mean, I've, Robbie, you, I've been in leagues where they've been dominant. I mean, if you can't look at a league and say, it's not as good as it's been, and maybe that's college basketball. Maybe that is, I, I don't know. But it just was, compared to other years, it was a bit down. So, um, yeah, maybe, you, yeah, probably you don't say that during the year. It's after the fact. It's not going to hurt anybody's NCAA chances, right? Nope. That's, that's right. Stuff doesn't matter anyways. Let's be real. Jeez, so, Coach, you, you mentioned those transfers. I feel like people have seen Armand Franklin, Jaden Gardner, maybe not so much. Yeah. I've done a couple of his games when he was at East Carolina. I've seen him go for 30 at Wichita State. Um, oh. How impressed have you been, I guess, just with his ability to score it? He's not huge. No. He's, well, he's strong. He's thick. He's buddy 6'6". Yeah. Six, six. Well, I, I don't know what he's, he's listed a, at. He's a he's undersized, but I like guys like that. He just kind of finds the basket. He's on the glass. He has touch. That's going to be important for us because we lost so much scoring. You know, we don't return hardly any scoring. Kihei is our leading scorer. Um, and I think, you know, to get baskets in different ways, um, you know, I said, well, he's, he might get swallowed up against the length of the ACC. Um, I just got a feeling, you know, watching Jaden playing, he, he's figured out ways his whole career and he won it. He was so excited about this opportunity to come and play in a league like the ACC and just see, and he's needed. I think when you bring in transfers, you know, it's good that you you want them, especially if they have experience, like to be able to step in and have a significant role. And, you know, they're both going to have to have that just the way our roster is. So there'll be ample opportunity. You know, there's adjustments. He's been well prepared at East Carolina. They didn't have a lot of success. They were close, but um, so he's hungry to try to be a part of a team and, just keep building it. And, um, but they did a good job developing and he had to do a lot for them. And I think, you know, he'll have some responsibility here. We're going to need that versatility in his scoring, um, playing different ways. And the same thing with Armand, you know, again, Archie and that staff did a great job and he, he ran some stuff. Arch, um, Indiana played somewhat of our defensive system. So sure. some concepts were similar and even offensively he could, he can move and shoot a little bit, and that's where we, we need some of that outside shooting that uh, we lost that um, is probably going to be important for us. So they both have great opportunities to come in and, and help us this year. So what, what's the biggest key, Tony, to, to still finishing at or near the top of the ACC this year? Yeah, um, I mean, I think we're going to have to be a, a rugged, tough defensive team. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I, I got a text, and we're starting our practice today. And my dad, he just texted me. I, he um, we talked to him for a couple of days, and he texted me something. He said, I can remember for the 40 years I was in coaching, I always loved the first day because he said, I always felt like um, where I would sit in front of the team and try in words to clearly explain to them what I saw them becoming, what their identity could be, and paint that picture. This is what I see you as. And I think that's important that a team has a clear identity of, Maybe you aren't that right away. No team is that. Maybe some of the teams experienced are, but but really saying this is what I see in you, and this is what we work towards daily and keep going through the ups and downs. And I think our team has to become a rugged physical team that is really good defensively. And when I say really good to the best of our abilities with new guys, last year we were okay, but not where we've been in the past. I liken it a little more to after the national championship year when we had – you know, Mamadi and Braxton Key, and we just – we found a way. I think we finished second that year. It was the COVID year. But, boy, we got better as the year went on, and we really guarded hard. We won games with our defense. And then, you know, just becoming a team that doesn't back down. That I, I told our team I, – I said we, we're not a blue blood. I said don't ever mistake us for – we're not a – we're a blue-collar program. And there's a big difference in my opinion. That doesn't mean anything to do, have anything to do with who's better, who's not, championships, not. No, don't make that mistake. I want guys that have a blue-collar approach. And I'm not saying the Blue Bloods don't have that approach, but I want that. And that's why I 
point to my Rocky poster all the time. I want guys that want to come in and they, they're so excited and hungry about the chance to go toe to toe and fight against the best in a league like the ACC and contend for championships. And they don't, they aren't entitled to anything. They don't assume. And it's a conflicting message because now at Virginia, we have, you know, people, all these athletes, they get worship. Oh, you're the greatest. You're this and that. No, you're a team that has lost a lot of its players. You come in, enjoy this process and be blue collar in your approach. And that that's, I guess, the identity I want to paint and then get into the specifics of what that's going to look like, um, you know, for this team on the court. And that's why that was a great reminder for my dad about, you know, that's the job in that first day. You always got excited about that. And then you stay, stay faithful to it. You, you talked about the inexperience. Is that your biggest concern with, with this group? Yeah, I, I think some of that, and, and although, you know, guys play, there, there's that inexperience. And then, you know, I think our ability from the perimeter, our, our outside shooting, you know, we just haven't, that we lost so much shooting, and that really won us some games. So um, now guys have really worked and improved on their shots and all that, but just that, that, that on paper, you'd say, well, where's your perimeter scoring? Where's your shooting come from? And so that could cause some issues, but um, that's why you're going to have to be good in those other areas. Doesn't mean we won't, but... It just – that's a uncertainty. So that along with the inexperience. Even, you know, Sam, redshirt a year, when you have guys in your system that know how to how to do the things that equate to winning, we don't have that as much as that inexperience of players that have played in practice. All right. Well, listen, we, we appreciate you joining us for a few, Tony. You got Robbie up early in San Diego, right. so now – He's got to hit the zoo or do something. I, I don't know what he's going to do, but he's wearing that hat, he better have some Red Bull and he should be good to yeah. go and alive. Yeah. So there's no issues there. <laughs> Listen, we appreciate it. Good luck and uh, hope to see you in Charlottesville uh, soon. Sounds good. See you guys. Take care, man.